aerospace engineers don't design a new airplane and then just hope it flies. Instead, they develop a model and run thousands of simulations to evaluate the new design, diagnose problems with an existing design, and test their model under conditions that are hard to reproduce in an actual system. In this video, I'm going to give you a high-level overview of how modeling and simulation are used, and explain how digital tools are helping solve some of the world's most challenging problems. But first, why do engineers spend so much time building virtual versions of things instead of just you know, building the actual thing? Well, there are many reasons. Let's look at three specifics. One, building and rebuilding physical prototypes is time consuming. Every new design means more materials, more build time, and more waiting around just to run a test. Two, Physical equipment is expensive, like really expensive. Testing an unproven design on real hardware with a million dollar prototype that may break or explode is often not within budget. Actually, you should assume it's definitely not within budget. Three, we cannot predict or test every possible outcome, but we still must design for the unexpected, along with outliers and other extreme events. For example, you can't just wait around for the next Category 5 hurricane to test your new wind turbine design. With digital simulation, we can tweak parameters to be as extreme as needed. So what do we mean when we say modeling and simulation? Let's break it down, first by looking at models and then simulations. There are three categories of models, physical models, process models, and mathematical models. Physical models are actual representations of real systems, usually scaled up or down from the size of an actual system. You may have played with one when you were young, such as a model train or a model car. Process models are the fun ones. Think flowcharts, supply chain logistics models, and financial approval processes. Exciting! Process models are great at tracking each step in a workflow. Finally, there are mathematical models. These can be simple or complex equations, which predict how something will respond. You can think of mathematical models as a glimpse into the future. For example, you can use a mathematical model to tell you how fast an apple will fall from a tree, and how hard it's going to hit you on the head. Next, let's examine three types of simulations. When students in business school role play as the CEO of a public company, they will simulate decisions that will lead their company to glory and profits or to simulated bankruptcy. This is known as a live simulation, basically people acting out the scenario themselves. Virtual simulations, on the other hand, are where a computer is used to play out a scenario. An example would be a digital twin of a real robot arm that models how different components work together before assembly. Finally, virtual simulations and live simulations can be combined to create constructive simulations, which are a mixture of the previous two types. For example, pilots train for thousands of hours on flight simulators before entering a real cockpit. Before a plane leaves the runway or a building endures a major earthquake, engineers have already tested their designs in a digital environment, like Simulink. Mathematical models, virtual simulations, complex data, and engineering come together to launch new products and build the world around you. If you want a free tutorial to get started with modeling and simulation, check out the Simulink on-ramp linked below. Thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you in another video.